ever launch from Cape Canaveral. And he always wants to make sure that he is taken care of when he arrives. Where the old Atlas rocket used to be driven by five engines, the RD-180 is so powerful that the new Atlas III will use just one and still offer 10% higher performance. In rocket science, it's not done to make forecasts about the launch. As the saying goes, you have to knock on wood. For this remarkable marriage of Russian engine and American rocket to have even reached the launch pad is only the result of a long and sometimes difficult collaboration between these two Cold War rivals. Bob Ford was one of the first people to assess Energomash's technology in the early 1990s. Our initial impressions was that we were being fed a line of something to, as a come on, and we couldn't understand how they could be getting the type of parameters they were talking about. They were talking about chamber pressure inside the engine that were higher than anything that we had in the United States. The chamber pressures being claimed for the engine were above those found in the American Space Shuttle and outclass standard rocket motors by a factor of four to one. We thought maybe we misunderstood each other. We were being told things that we couldn't validate against our own experience and we had to, we had to go off and check because it just didn't, it wasn't the same technology we were used to. It was, it was a paradigm shift in what, what uh, we were expecting. Five, four, three, that gap between American expectations and Russian performance was explained by Russia's hardware-focused engineering tradition. Building on the technology first developed for the NK-33, the RD-180 uses a high-performance closed cycle that had been rejected as too risky by engineers in the United States. The engine design itself was, um, was a departure from what the Americans would do for an engine design. All the oxygen inside the engine actually flows through the pre-burner, what actually drives the turbine. The oxygen-rich closed cycle would mean far higher combustion chamber pressures, but it was not without risks. The hot oxygen gas coming from the pre-burner is so flammable that even the metal engine itself can catch fire and explode. If you had an ignition source, you could, and we've seen it on some engines, actually just burn the engine up. The aftermath is something to see. It looks like you've seen large castings that probably are three inches thick, literally melt like uh, candle wax. From their factory on the outskirts of Moscow, Energomash have, since World War II, produced over 100 engine designs, each one an improvement on the last. By incremental development, they succeeded in mastering a combustion cycle that, because it was oxygen-rich, had been rejected as just too dangerous by rocket scientists in the United States. It's not only the Americans who didn't manage to do that but also the Europeans, the Japanese, and the Chinese. To do this, we had to approach how the fuel is burned in the pre-burner very carefully so that the temperature field is uniform, and to choose the right kind of materials and production techniques. Energomash had found a way of using the closed cycle to take chamber pressures to new limits while protecting the inside of the motor from the greater risks of fire. A whole new class of high temperature resistant stainless steels, unseen in the West, was invented to cope with a hazardous oxygen rich environment. With that kind of technology, Lockheed Martin's skepticism evaporated. It was very easy to persuade them. We said, here's the engine, here it is in the production unit, here it is at the test center, and now we're going to test it. Look at the data. What better way to present it than with a concrete test of a specific iron engine? To be persuaded that it works, 
and works reliably. Attention on Complex 36A. There'll be loud venting on the east side of APAD ramp. I say again, loud At Cape Canaveral, the ground controllers have started their final checks. Today, the RD-180 engine offers performance and reliability beyond anything achieved in the United States with its billions of dollars of investment in space technology. Exposure to Russian design philosophy has forced American technology giant Lockheed Martin to question some of its own most cherished working methods. Clear back, except for the green team. The Russians design engineers design the engine. They, they have all the drawings. They hand the drawings across to the manufacturing uh, engineers that are on the floor that are actually going to build this thing. And those folks actually take over the design at that time. Whereas in the United States, the design engineer would design something, and he'll hand it across to the factory floor, and the factory floor will say, I've got to meet this drawing. And what happens is cost of articles go up, scrap rate goes up, uh, requirements for tighter and tighter machines go up, and we turn the factory into, into more of a technology lab. Back at Kuznetsov, the team that designed and built the NK-33 is still together. Though now in his 70s, Valentin Anisimov remains chief designer of engines. He and the team are ready to resume production of the NK-33. We've been waiting for this for a long time, for 20 years. All the decisions on that have already been taken. Production of these engines will be restored in Samara. Highest winds we saw in the area were over 20, 23 knots, but nothing more than that at the Cape. So there's currently no lightning advisories for the Cape. As the Atlas mission controllers take their places for the countdown, with the launch of this new rocket, Russian rocket engine technology will finally have come in from the cold. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, and right now holding at 60 percent chance that they'll go at the beginning of the window. However, improving conditions as we approach the uh, second half of the window. Inergo's team will be able to monitor the engine's performance from their own control room for the duration of its three-minute burn. Spacecraft on internal power. Roger. Ready to report to resume countdown. Atlas systems propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Level 2. Go. Vehicle electrical. Go. Late termination system. Go. Electrical. Go. Talent monitor vehicle loads. Go. TV control. Go. Operations. Ten years after the end of the Cold War, old-fashioned, hands-on Russian engineering is about to teach American high technology an uncomfortable lesson. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and the RD-180 engine roars to life and lift off. The idea that, that the technology in the United States was not equal or superior to the Russians was a very hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. It was very difficult to tell somebody in the uh, government that all this money that they put into it really, there was still a technology edge over in Russia over what we got here. Everything looks good there. We have stopped loose phase chill down right on time. 